with the uh, second choice in the draft, the San Diego Chargers select quarterback, Washington State University, Brian Leaf. Money changes you. If you have character defects that exist already, they are exacerbated. You don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Back, Ryan Leaf was arrested Friday in his Montana hometown. Well, I was always trying to tone Ryan down. Always. Ryan Leaf has been arrested for the second time in just four days. I never wanted him to stick out, but he did. Commissioner steps to the podium. Ryan Leaf turned out to be one of the biggest busts of all time in NFL draft history. But what if, and I mean just what if, in some alternate universe, the Colts took Ryan Leaf instead of Peyton Manning? How different would his career in the NFL as we know it look to this day? With the first pick of the 1998 NFL draft, the Colts took Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, it seems to me, is the guy that has the most experience, and that ultimately is going to be, I think, the difference in this draft. And with the second pick in the NFL draft, the San Diego Chargers at the time took Ryan Leaf. Manning is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and possibly the greatest regular season quarterback ever. Leaf is the most notorious draft bust in NFL history. He's basically the definition and template of what a bust is. Here's a look at four different things that could have happened if the Colts took Ryan Leaf with the number one overall pick in that draft. Peyton Manning started all 16 games in his rookie season. He struggled in comparison to a typical Manning season and the Colts had a three and 13 record, but Manning threw for over 3,000 yards and 26 touchdowns and 28 interceptions in his first season. On the other hand, Ryan Leaf started nine games in his rookie season and immediately looked like a bust. The Chargers were three and six in those games that Leaf started and ended the season with a five and 11 record. He threw only two touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Leaf had a completion percentage of 45%. Yes, 45%, which isn't the greatest by any means. But for starters, Leaf needed time to develop and the Chargers decided not to bring in a starting quarterback for him to learn under. He was immediately thrown into the fire and struggled. In his first five starts, Leaf threw one touchdown and nine interceptions. And as bad as Leaf was, he wasn't getting much help. He didn't have a good running back and he didn't have many receivers to turn to either. His head coach was Kevin Gilbert, who was only in his second season as a head coach and would never be a head coach after the 1998 season. And on the other hand, Manning was surrounded by talent. The Colts had a Hall of Fame running back in Marshall Falk and future Hall of Fame wide receiver Marvin Harrison, helping Manning on the offense. Now, if Leaf had been thrown into the same situation, he may have gotten off to a better start. And who knows, this could have boosted his confidence and allowed him to become a decent or even a mediocre quarterback. Now, we know that Leaf did have some off-the-field issues and struggled emotionally with the transition to the NFL. So maybe Leaf was destined to fail in the NFL because with the substance abuse and other things off the field, his career probably would have unfolded the exact same way, no matter where he was drafted. Now, the next thing to ask if Ryan Leaf does go to the Colts is, does Peyton Manning ever become Peyton Manning as we know him if he goes to the Chargers. Now, as mentioned before, the Chargers were not a great team when Ryan Leaf joined them in 1998. The difference in talent on the team could have caused Manning to struggle. He probably wouldn't have struggled as much as Leaf, but he could have seen a serious drop in his passing yards and touchdowns and an increase in his interceptions. And with a team that was not as good as the Colts, Manning could have tried to force more passes and struggled to get in a rhythm. If Manning started the first nine games with somewhere around eight touchdowns, and 22 interceptions, it is possible that the Chargers could have turned to their backup at that time. Now, while Manning probably would have been okay wherever he went, it is possible his legacy could have taken a hit had he been drafted to the Chargers. Now, the most intriguing question of all of these though is because of the ripple effect that would have happened due to Ryan Leaf going number one overall instead of number two. And what would have happened to Drew Brees? Now, as we know, the Chargers selected Drew Brees in the 2001 NFL draft. And if they had Peyton Manning, it's likely that Drew Brees would have never been drafted to the Chargers. Brees and the Chargers parted ways after the 2004 season because they couldn't agree on a new contract. 
The Chargers knew they had Phillip Rivers waiting to play quarterback, so they lowballed Breeze, and this caused him to seek other offers and ultimately sign with the New Orleans Saints. And we all know how that went. And who knows, the Dallas Cowboys and Oakland Raiders both drafted a quarterback in the second round that year in the 2001 draft, after Breeze was selected by the Chargers. If Breeze was selected by the Cowboys, Raiders, or another team, he could possibly still be on that team to this day. But the one that'll sting the most is if they had Peyton Manning, they most likely would have won a Super Bowl or two at some point during Manning's career. Manning was able to lead the Colts to two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl victory. The Colts made the playoffs 10 out of his 13 seasons there. Now, the Chargers have been a pretty successful franchise in recent history, but have been disappointing in the playoffs. Manning might have been the answer that got them over the hump and could have won them some Super Bowls. One of the most intriguing things about Manning being on the Chargers throughout his career would have been the chance to see him play alongside LaDainian Tomlinson. Tomlinson was one of the greatest running backs to ever play the position because of his ability to not only run with the ball, but catch out of the backfield. Manning would have had an absolute field day with Tomlinson in the backfield. It also would have been interesting to see Manning throwing to guys like Antonio Gates and Vincent Jackson. But no matter how it played out though, we were left with some lasting memories from each of their careers, some bad and some very good.